Hello and welcome to Unstructured <laughs> and Unsupervised. Oh, I love how you bring that spooky fall, like fallness to the, to the yeah, with the very dramatic entrance. <laughs> we should do a spooky episode. We should. We uh we get a uh, Halloween episode. We're dressing up. I'm dressing up. Are you gonna dress up? Um yes. And there are two celebrities who I this week was told look like. I'll show you. Is this pre or post haircut? Both. Oh nice. Also, that's Katrina Reese. I looked over there. Did you notice that? I looked over there like there was an audience. I'm like, that's Katrina Reese. And I'm Nicola Monaco. Or otherwise, aka Nicole Marion. So we didn't introduce ourselves prior, so I figured it might be important that we do that. <laughs> we just started saying hello, and we're unstructured and unsupervised. But yes. Anyway, tell me more. Tell me more. Like, does he have a car? Tell me more. What does he have a car? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I actually made Frenchie in my high school senior class version of that musical. And, uh, Wait, going back to what they look like, who do you look like? I need to know. I look like, oh yes, and I uh, just started the timer, by the way. So there are two. Oh, good. Apparently there's an actor in the show, uh, The Expanse. And so Lori pointed this person out. And. Okay. I could see it. Oh, there you go. Wherever you're holding right now is perfect. Um. I could see it. There's a resemblance. I well, don't think they look like exactly alike, but like there's a resemblance. I mean, I did look at it. I think with the hair change, um, I look a little Maybe bit. Maybe when your hair was longer. My hair was longer. Yeah. Yes. I, I think when your hair looked longer, you look more like it. The, did you get the same um, response from two people? Also like. About the same person? No, my friend Jackie, uh, improv friend, she said I look like with the haircut, Ava Noblezada. Never heard of her. Oh, yeah, I see that resemblance more. Yeah, that one I see a lot more. The other girl, not so much, but she's cute. I see both. I see both. Fun, fun. You get is that um I remember you said that you get a lot of like, oh my gosh, you look like Lady Gaga. I get a lot of Lady Gaga. When my hair is especially when my hair was blonde, now I don't so much. Sometimes now I get Miley Cyrus with my big mouth. And then what? when my hair was blonde, I always got no. Yeah. You don't look like Miley Cyrus. You I don't think you it, kind of sound like Miley Cyrus. You both have the like, you know, like gravelly voice. Scratch, yeah. Smoke. Yeah. You got the smoke sound. The smoke voice, yeah. Um, Love that sound. I think I, I think I was born with that smoker's cough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. <laughs> I think I was. No, literally, my mom was like, my mom had said to me, because uh, I, she goes, I instantly knew you were going to have my voice the moment you cried. She's like, you sounded like, you, she's like, you just had this raspy voice. And I was, I thought, so that is a good joke. That could be a joke. That's truly what happened, but that's a good joke. It's like, well, that's because you smoked while you were pregnant or something. Um, I don't know how true that is. It probably is true. But <laughs> either way, um, yeah. Anyway, what were we talking about prior to that? Oh, celebrity look like. Being a smoker. Uh, Lady Gaga, I sound like, um, I sound like, what's her name now? Miley Cyrus. You sound like Miley Cyrus. I mean, she's kind of got like a like a little bit more of a squeak, I think. Yeah, and a twang. And a twang, a squeak and a twang. Yeah, like she's like I got a Long Island Miley talk. Like she's twangy. I feel mm -hmm. like you could probably do a Did you know Cyrus impression. If I was what. You, I feel like you could probably do a really good Miley Cyrus impression. Oh my God, I would have to try. Um, you know what keeps, I, I want to do it. And the voice that's keep coming to my head is Amanda from the Amanda show, Amanda Bond. When she's like, I hit you in the head a little flash. 
I love the Amanda. <laughs> you know, that was a good show. And that's why like, I'm hearing that, but I hear like that's how Miley Cyrus talks too, but not quite as Amanda E. I can't do Miley. I, I don't remember the last time I heard her speak, to be, uh, to be honest with you. Say, Miley was like, can't stop. I feel like she's a little. I, oh, wait, I think there's. Can't stop. I think there's a slight. I problem. feel like she doesn't breathe out of her nose ever. Like, it, it almost sounds like her, that she, like, has a post-nasal drip in the back of her. But, like, you can't actually inhale from the inside of your nose. It's like you just have to speak all the way down from the back of your throat. <laughs> you say, I came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> I can't sing that. Um, uh, why am I getting nervous about my thing? I came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't have a good voice, but um, thanks for making me do that, though. Throw me way out of my comfort zone. So just so you know, um, there is, it seems like there's a slight delay. Okay. Just a touch. On just a touch of your love. Um, I don't know. Do you think it's the headphone? <laughs> Possible. Possible. Hmm. Should I do something about it? I would say maybe disconnect the headphones, see how this how it sounds. Okay. Hold on a moment. You sound good with them. Hello? Hello. Wait. Testing. Hold on. Testing. One, two, three. A testing. Oh. It won't let me turn it off. Ooh. This technology okay. is like so weird. There's no off Why? Do they... it's, I'm pressing this button and it's doing nothing. Hello? Oh, wait. Is it? Are you doing like a noise canceling? Is that a noise canceling switch or is it an on off switch? Because I feel like in the front there, it looks like there's a switch in the front. It's an on-off on switch. But let me just see if I disconnect the Bluetooth or something. Yeah. I guess. Um, I don't know how to do that while I'm on here with you. I did it before. How did I do it? Oh, maybe I went over here. New idea. So in, what happened? In, in the Zoom window, if you go to yeah. your microphone, there's a little arrow, so it should be the bottom left icon um, where it says mute. There's like a little microphone, yeah. take the little arrow, and then for the microphone, choose your laptop and not the headphones. So built-in microphone probably. Wow. Yeah. And can you still hear me? What happened? Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Oh, it's better. It's better? Yeah. Wow, Katrina, you're like the genius. Oh. Oh. oh my God. I'm fascinated by it, the technology these people know how to do, you and others. I'm not equipped to learn. I'm like, I'm panicking. I no longer know how to human. Oh, this is you. Ah, I got it now. I could hear you, you could hear me. Amazing. I, anyway, so what? Like, way that those headphones work is it's kind of like a. I don't know. I have to think about some more. Anyways. How have you been? How are you? How's it going? I'm um, doing uh, very well today. Yesterday was a hard day for me. Um, it was Pasha's anniversary of uh, she passed away a year ago. Yesterday. And so I had a, a hard time yesterday. And I, I'm... I was kind of interested today in like talking about uh, grief a little bit and like that kind of stuff because people are weird about grief. So, um, do you want to do breathing? Breathing. We could do breathing. We go into it. And then we'll talk about grievings, breathing, and grievings. Okay. So. Well, that's you what? My shirt. Oh, thank you. Um, 
I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Your water smells? Bottle smells. Ew, like what? Anyways. If you had to describe it, what would you say it smells like? Like like smells taco like water? Like taco like, water? You know when, like you leave a wet, um a water bottle in the car or something and it's like, hmm, it smells weird. Like something melted in here. Oh. Uh, oh well. Fine. Okay. If I start Plastic bottles. Oh, breathing. That's what we're doing. That's right. This is why we breathe, so we could get ourselves centered and structured for our unstructured show. Awesome. Okay, so let's bring our hand to our heart and our right hand over, left hand on the heart, right hand over. We'll close our eyes down. We'll begin slow, long, deep breathing through the nose. Filling the belly, letting the air rise. Exhaling through the nose. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Just continuing with this breath on your own for a moment. Allowing the breath to deepen through the nose, out through the nose, filling the belly fully and exhaling all the air out until you can have no more breath left in. Well, inhale deeply, hold the breath and suspend it for a moment until you can't hold it any longer. Hold it for a long time. Slowly opening up the eyes. Welcome back. <laughs> Hi. That was relaxing. Yes, I needed that. I needed that too. I was like really out of sorts. I'm so glad. I had a long day yesterday. I uh, lost Sasha a year ago. For those of you watching who don't know, Sasha was my cat. She was. My old lady, floopy, fluff, fluff, sweet, talkative, Maine Coon queen. And she was so important to me for a lot of reasons. I mean, like, like explaining how important uh, this cat was to me is and still is to me is hard for a lot of people to understand and like kind of uh, uh, empathize with in a way that meets the need like emotionally which is she, she was like my baby and she was really important to me she she passed away last year really fast acting sickness um, 
and basically I, I did everything that I could to try and take care of her, but she had cancer. And I started noticing she was losing weight in March. Um, but by that, and I had called the vet and I was like, I think my cat is sick and she doesn't weigh as much. She seems like she's bony. And uh, the vet wasn't able, or any veteran's office wasn't able to accept patients unless it was an emergency because of the pandemic. So I couldn't get her tested for anything. Um, and then one day, I think it was, it was July or August, she like, wouldn't stop throwing up. And like cats can get dehydrated really fast. So I got, I, I took her to the emergency room. They gave her fluids and they tested her. And they said she has these raised liver enzymes. Um, you know, they gave me the, the results of it and that. And they basically said she can take a medicine, but uh, to treat what we think it, what it is. But usually, or very frequently, a lot of masks a kidney issue. So it may seem, oh, she'll get better, and then she'll get worse again. Um, so this particular cancer, and there was a, a treatment that I, uh, that was an option, but it was thousands of dollars. And I was sick twice last year. I had, um, I was like in and out of jobs last year because of for multiple reasons, not even pandemic reasons. And actually, I got really lucky by the end of the year with my work because the company that I'm working at now, and um, and by the way, that's the reason why I'm not able to record live today is I'm not home. I um, have a weird job, which involves going to houses after there's like floods and fires and things. Anyways. Sasha died last year. That day, I had woken up and I looked at her and I, I was like, oh, it's going to be soon. And I called the vet and asked to schedule for later in the week. I didn't want her to suffer. And they said that the only availability that they had was that afternoon. And so I immediately had a panic attack. But I was like, I have to do this for her, like, I'm not going to let her suffer, um, needlessly, um, it can be avoided, and so I called out of work, and I stayed with her, and I got lucky that I um, got to be with her that day, because actually before the appointment, I was holding her and I was talking to her and like, you know, thanking her and basically saying how much she meant to me and um, my aunt who, you know, she's had many pets, like I had told her that Sasha was really sick and she did tell me in advance, like it's important and it does become time that you try to be as calm as possible for her because animals are so sensitive like if you're if you're like you know in a in a state they then are feeling that and it's kind of like you want to make them comfortable like you also need to be comfortable so i was able to get to a place and um, i told you where it's like and I'm ready, like, like, and I, like, told, like, said to her, like, that it's okay for her to go. And, you know, she was, I was holding her, she's laying right on me, and she's looking at me, and passed away before the appointment. And, uh, um, after, Sasha died, and uh, 
I didn't really get to grieve very much, um, at least openly with a lot of people. You know, I post on Facebook and everyone's so nice and my friends were so like understanding and, because they knew like well, how much she meant to me. Like she like kept me alive. Well, we were just, well, before we started, we were talking earlier about how like you didn't really have much time to grieve either. You, like you were going through such a transition after she passed. Like you like immediately moved like very quickly after that. You yeah. are now living with roommates and different personalities and like getting a new job and dealing with the pandemic. And like, there was no real time to process the no. grief of. And, and yeah, and, and it's kind of like everyone's grieving too. And uh I'm not someone that thinks that you should ever compare anyone's grief to anyone else's. Um, oh, I didn't mean it like that. I meant it in the sense. I didn't oh. think, I'm saying that I received that response from people of like. Oh, oh. Like, people not really understanding. And also, just being like, because of their grieving process, and there are five stages of grief, and there's, you know. Sadness, anger, denial, uh, bargaining, acceptance, in any whatever order. And, you know, if, if you've lost family members to pandemic, it's uh, not easy. I lost my grandma during the pandemic and my, um, I wasn't allowed to go to her wake. I wasn't allowed to go to anything and they were only allowed to to have my mom, my aunt, and my two uncles like at the burial and nobody else was allowed to go. So it was just like very odd, like not having any closure to like say goodbye in any way or like she passed away. And like I, did, I, I, I saw her for Mother's Day and we like waved to her from the balcony. And like I said, you know, I love you. And just, you know, I'm always thinking of you. That was the last time I saw her in person. And then she was in the hospice and my mom was allowed to be in hospice with her and um, they FaceTimed and she was like kind of sleeping. And I had a dream the night before that my dream was like, you need to let your grandmother know that it's okay, like that she can go, you know, because like she was holding on because I think she felt like she wasn't able to see us grandchildren and like that she was like waiting to be able to see us. And I like made a video and I, I mean, I faced on my mom and I said, um, just put the phone up to grandma's ear for me. And she said, okay. And I just said, you know, like, we love you. And I had a dream about you last night and you looked beautiful and you were dancing. And I'm like, you know, you're okay. I know that your arms are always going to be around me. I know you're always going to be with me and like hung up the phone, but like to not, like I, I've gone to so many funerals and like, I don't know, there's just something about, Maybe I'm being a little Stephen about it, but there's something about taking a prayer card uh, home from, uh, you know, like having something that's like a visual of a memorial. So they ended up getting the card made and then my mom got me one of those. So I felt better about it. And actually today, it's so weird that we're talking about this is um, Brian and I were driving. Um, hold on, Miss Tallulah actually just wants to say hi to you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she's like hello um we were driving past the hospice where my grandma passed away and the sun like just was popping out like the clouds just separated and the sun came out and I looked up to the sun and I was like oh hi sun and then I looked and realized where we were actually driving it was right over the hospice where my mom ended up getting a brick made that was a memorial for her so that like there's a space that you can go to and like grieve her you know but again, like losing somebody during a pandemic and like not being able to grieve and the way that you quote unquote normally would, it's, it's, it's just a very weird, unsettling feeling. Yeah. It's, it's like funerals are important, like for the people who are left behind and not being able to, to 
grieve last year for anyone who passed away is, I don't think that, I don't think that um, it makes the grieving process easier to not be able to like do these rituals of like you know, saying goodbye. And like, it also brings like, you know, gravity to it. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of people who just haven't processed anything because this is kind of like, it's, uh, oh, that happens, you know, and then it's hard to, to feel okay to grieve, on, like, delayed almost. It's okay. All right. Okay. And then when, and then you have like, you're just like reading death polls and tolls or whatever, like during this whole time for other things. And it's like, it's almost like we're getting so de desensitized from death and like the beauty that comes with, like, it was like COVID death, COVID death, another COVID death, like, and people were, some people weren't even dying from COVID, but like, like it was just like the, 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 the memorance of a person is now just become like a number yeah. and you know like so many people are grieving like loved ones in so many different ways and facets of, of, of this time period and I don't know it's like I feel like over time like we're all just becoming more desensitized or at least it's been felt like it's trying to desensitize us from well, I mean, being I, able to grieve. I generally think that people already even before the pandemic like people already were like you're sad you know like oh, i don't uh let me just like do something fun and happy like oh let me fix it for you and it's like no like it's okay to be sad and and like grieve a loss and just like be able to Show respect to whoever it was or Sasha like the pet if you're if you have like a bond with a pet like that it just like it changed it changes your life you know after she died I was like I can't be in this job anymore that is just not fulfilling to me like really like how much time do you do we have left and right that's such an important sentence you just said. Like, how much time do we really have left? And it's like, I try my very best to not take any days for granted because it's short. It goes by so quick, you know? And we take it, so a lot of times we, we like find something to get upset about or it's like, and I know it's okay to be a sad and it's, and it's okay to grieve, but there's healthy amounts of time for each thing, you know, before it, there's healthy ways to grieve but also like people don't really learn how to grieve just, right like, let yourself let yourself like feel all those emotions but people are afraid to let themselves be sad or angry or because it's so i agree yeah. i i agree i agree because i feel like sometimes there's also like well or you do grieve something and then you stay in it, you know, like there's people too that grieve things. And then that sadness, almost like you don't even come out of it. Yeah. It like becomes like their life. Yeah. But also, but that just is another kind of way of like, Oh, people don't know how to grieve properly. It's all, it's like learning how to drive and you didn't learn how to break. You know? So how do you, how do you learn how to like let yourself feel these like intense emotions of, of loss. I feel like the best way to learn those things is like to actively practice them yourself so that when you are put in a situation where another human person um, needs a person that's able to dig into those feelings and do that, like you're an example now for somebody else, like living it and and doing it for yourself is like, oh, like, look at, wow, they're handling this well, or, oh, you know, like, 
whatever the case may be like it's other people i think that's how we learn the most is like an example of other people and how they handle things do you are you someone that people kind of turn to what during grief because i feel like um i am i'm someone that definitely has the capacity to like listen to someone that is going through something like that because i have my own experiences and i am mm -hmm. an emotional person and i love to talk I've been in therapy for years it's like you talk you don't talk um but yeah you i feel like I feel like there are, it is a good chunk of people that I feel like I'm a lot of people sounding boards, you know, where um, I am able to understand people for what they're really trying to convey. Like, I hear the words. I don't always, like, the tone people say sometimes. Like, I could read between the lines of what, like, an angry person presenting something, and I'm like, Ooh, okay, that's intense, but like, where is that anger stemming from? Like, let's go there. Let's take a walk there and just like, why are we getting so upset about this? Which is, yeah, I don't always have. I don't always have a um, a me for me, if that makes sense. Yes. Like, I feel like I don't always have somebody that is able to, other than like when you and I have conversations, like you definitely. Um, you definitely listen. And Brian, uh, he is a much better listener than I originally had given him credit for. Uh, if I'm being honest, like I grew up so much with like not being heard and not being listened to. So I always think I have to cut myself short or just keep my mouth quiet. And I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll just move and shape myself to make these other people feel more comfortable because I know how to do that. And, you know, I've become so good at it that it's like, this is how my person operates. It's like, I know how to make myself malleable to certain situations. Yeah. And I don't always know if that's a good or a bad thing because I, I always feel like I'm in a constant state of adjust rather than just <laughs> um what put, put that put that on a shirt but i'm trying to think how but that I, make it um, a constant state of adjust rather than just i don't know um so i guess what i'm getting at is like when you have someone else like ourselves to talk to about these things and really like dive into the deep end you know, Brian's, well, let's say that Brian's a very good listener. He doesn't always know how to like ride in the wave with me. You know what I mean? Like he'll listen to everything that I have to say and really like hold space for me to talk it out amongst myself, which, um, which honestly talking it out with you right now. And this is why is another reason why I love talking to you is because like you can hold space for me to talk these things out for myself is I'm never going to listen to anybody else's advice anyway. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have to like discover it on your own. I have to discover it on my own, but it's like a matter of knowing that I've, I've never had someone do that. Anytime that I had spoken as a child, at least this is where the stem of it came from. It was like somebody else already had the answer for me, somebody mm -hmm. telling you how to do it. And it would be like, they never just let you just, figure it out for yourself or say like, I want to talk about this or whatever, whatever. So I think um, I very definitely can empathize with that. Be, like Growing up, I, I hate a lot of my life. And um, I was very angry child, um, very sad, depressed, anx anxious. And I think maybe and maybe that's why we are able to have like such the conversations because it's like we have that shared experience of not being heard in a in a like a real way and being kind of like told what to do and that's why I mean when I when I talk to someone or like if someone is like trying to figure something out I like to ask questions to the person so that they can like 
figure it out for themselves then. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't have all the answers, but I definitely come with a different perspective. Yeah, and asking questions is the best thing to do. Like sometimes I'll ask, and I've gotten, you know, it's, it's like I could do this with you and other people, but it's always like my most intimate relationships that are always the biggest challenge to like um, live in the truth of what you speak. <laughs> so practicing that um, is not always easy. Like today was a good example of being afraid to speak up. And there was no reason for it other than like it was just my past patterns and conditioning that led me to believe like oh if I say this thing this person's going to automatically assume this thing or they're going to take it the wrong way or like they're gonna get mad that I'm feeling like this or you know like I always have all these anxieties about if what's going to happen if I speak up to the people closest to me very so conscious. yeah so it's always like like if I'm on stage, I could talk for days. If I'm talking to strangers, I could talk for days about how I am as a person and what I love and what, I, but when I have to introduce that, that big personality to the people closest to me, it's, it's not always easy. So today, um, we, we're both going to be on a comedy show at uh, red zone, September 8th, se September 18th. Uh, it's eight o'clock seating, nine o'clock show. It's hosted by John Butera. Um, he's producing it. I'll be hosting that night. Katrina will be headlining. So um, this is the first time I'm getting up on stage in a really long time and going to be hosting a show. Your first headlining. And this is awesome. Like it says, uh, this is a big night for us. I feel like we're having a, you know, our, what? It's going to be interesting. <laughs> It's going to be interesting. That's for sure. We're both going to be up there doing our thing and having fun is what the most important thing is. But just so you know, if I'm like, I can't do this, I will be like, Nicole, come here, come talk to me. <laughs> and I will come. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to give you a pep talk. I'm going to be like, you can do anything. Just look at me. You can fucking do anything you put your mind to. <laughs> you could do fucking do it. Um, I'm like the biggest cheerleader. Like, I'm like, no, I believe in you. Like, you're going to go up there and you're going to fucking rock this shit. I, I want to come back to the cheerleader thing, but I do want, uh, I, you were saying about the show. Oh, yeah. So about the show, it was like, we're doing this gig together. And I got like angry this afternoon because I had mentioned it to my boyfriend. I was like, oh, I'm doing my comedy show. And I like mentioned it twice and the flyer went up and I was just like, I don't know. I we're both him and I are both like anxiety ridden with certain things. Like we both don't ever want to put any pressure on one another, but we also like not go. Should I say anything? What if I don't say? Yeah, anything? exactly. Like, should I tell him? Should I not tell him? Should I invite him? And he'll probably he's like, you know, I don't want to make her nervous if I'm there. But like, it's just like a whole like we don't know what to say to one another thing. The same problem. So. I got mad about it and I was mad because I didn't know how to convey it. It wasn't even like I was mad about the situation as so much or like either one of us were wrong for feeling that way, but I was mad because I didn't know how to tell him what I was feeling. Yeah. I was, I was getting angry because I couldn't verbalize. Like I was just giving an attitude and there was no reason for an attitude when I could have just stated it so I was huffy and I got out of the car and I was like I don't know I'm just like eh, right now I don't know I gotta like sit with myself to figure it out and he was like okay I love you and I'm like love you too so cute <laughs> and then uh like huh? and then um I go inside <laughs> what yeah sure whatever <laughs> <laughs> like huh? no I, I like I do I like gush over him but um yeah. I get in the house and I'm mad and I'm like whatever. And I'm sitting here like, well, what do I do? What, what am I even mad about right now? Like, why am I even angry? And I realized it was because I wanted him to be there. I wanted him to seem interested in what I was doing. I felt like I didn't meant, but I'm now here I am getting angry at him for expecting him to be 
read my mind and like be interested in something and like him i i didn't present it to him like hey i'm doing this comedy show like i'm really excited or i'm really nervous about it like what do you think about coming are you feeling like i didn't ask i didn't say anything i just told him i'm doing a comedy show saturday night and he was like okay like okay i order like, okay so you know, I say I, and I was like, well, he didn't say anything like, oh, that's great. You should, you know, do you want me to come or that's awesome? How do you feel about it? Like, what are you thinking about it? Like, sometimes I want questions asked to me about yeah. like, how do you feel about it? But like, I think he also might want that. So we both are like doing this, like neither one of us talk thing sometimes. Do you, do you think and then, if like he does that because he's afraid of, you saying that you don't want him to be there? Probably the same. I can't speak for him to say that. I don't know. Probably. Uh, I know. I I know that I feared. What? I was just saying, Brian, if you're watching and listening to this. Watch he's, play, he's, play, <laughs> he's playing his video game tonight. But um, I don't know. I just felt like, I guess you said it. You think he's afraid if. I did like if he didn't want me to go I don't know I feel like he's I, he's so relaxed and so like blase and like aloof about things sometimes that like I don't know if it interests him or if he doesn't care at all or if he's like whatever like I feel like most of the time he's kind of like whatever you want to do just like let me know but I forget that because I'm like, what do you want? Yeah. And like the answer always ends up being like, I want you to be happy. So like his oh, thing is like, I want what you want because I want you to be happy with certain things, not everything. But like in this situation, it's like, okay, what does, would it make me happy if he was there? And then I was angry with myself because like I didn't know a definitive answer. I was like, well, do I want him there? Because am I going to get nervous if he's there? Am I going to be worrying about him more than I'm going to be worrying about what I'm doing in the show? Like, is he okay? Is he having fun? Does he think I'm funny? I don't want him to not think I'm not funny. Like, all these things go through my head. So, like... I, d I don't ask people to come to my shows um, be sometimes because I get so nervous that they aren't going to want to come. And it's... I, I mean, and this is something that I struggle with of, like... Like, I have a fear of, of, I hate being disappointed. Right? Me too. <laughs> yesterday, I, I had, I was upset yesterday because, you know, and um, I mean, this kind of circles back to the grief, you know, it was a hard day. And it was a hard day for a lot of our friends too, because Norm McDonald, rest in peace, like passed away. And it's just kind of like, what? Like. Who knew? And uh, I I know that a lot of our friend, a lot of my friends, like who were grieving that loss, uh, they they weren't able to like be there for me also because they're grieving and they're having their kind of like their head is in the clouds kind of thing. Um, clouds. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, uh, I had a friend who uh, had planned to come hang out with me and then forgot because they had um, had too much of the substance and um, it like it really hurt, and it's it's like okay, I'm extra sensitive today, and I am sensitive in general when it's when I am when I feel like a less than or abandoned or second second fiddle. I get that not feeling like a priority. I. I want to feel like a priority, <laughs> you know. I get that completely. Yes. I was really upset yesterday. Like, I was really lonely, and um, I think the people who, you know, 
it was it's like okay why am i so sensitive right now why am i acting like this it's like well there's a lot <laughs> going on and what am i asking of people what what, what expectation do i have of people that is like reasonable because you know i with the adhd it's like oh i definitely understand if you made a mistake or you forgot that we make plans and oh my god do i hate though like letting people down if i if i tell someone i'm gonna do something i'm gonna do everything that i can to make sure that i keep that and yeah i'm similar to that too yeah if i have to can't i'm like don't tell me you can't do it if you can't do it just say maybe say we'll think about it but like if you say you're gonna do something like really follow through to at least try and do it like if you can't then just be like i don't know we'll see i'll take a look uh let me get back to you on that leave it open-ended but if you say i'm gonna be there or i'm gonna hang out with you or i'm gonna do this thing like fucking do it <laughs> so i so i mean i lost my temper in like an uncharacteristic way or at least in a way that i have learned not to do but it was just that's how much that's how much it was like for me yesterday <clears throat> but i forgot how i got to that point um, um we were talking about like feeling norm. feeling like important or like a priority um and that's how i make people feel like a priority you know my my love language is acts of service and quality time like it's equal amount so I'd like to do stuff for people <laughs> and I like to be around people. And so if people seem like they don't really want to be around me. Oh, does it upset me so much? Yeah, I could understand that. It makes, it makes you feel like, well, am I not worthy of enough of this time? Is like, is it my presence? Like, is this situation not important to you as it is to me? And like, you know, that's another thing too, is like, not just for this situation, but for a lot is like putting, putting your perspective of importance of something away for a little bit to really, un like, it could be something that like, you don't understand. You do not get why this person is upset about it. I don't know why they're feeling the way that they're feeling. This is not something I from, am familiar with. I don't know what to do. Right. Like judgment about it, like having that space, like you say, is right. And just like putting your own perception away, just to like let this person be whatever it is that they're going through at that time. Yeah. And I don't think I practice that all of my life by any means. But as I'm getting older, like I've gotten much better with not putting my opinion onto things anymore. Like I used to be like, I don't like that or I don't do this or da 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 da. And like learning to be like, okay. And just listening is like, I'm not used to that either because again, this is a pattern of our parents of things too. It's like, I grew up with somebody doing that to me and now I'm unbreaking those patterns of what I've learned that I was doing to other people. Like if somebody was talking, it was like, I immediately gave them my opinion about something or I try to give them my advice or what they should be doing or what do you, why would you do it that way? You should do it this way. And it's like, shut the fuck up, Nicole. How about you shut the fuck up? And I'm like, okay. Don't shut the fuck yeah. up. I well, you know, now I ask, no, now I, I ask, do you want advice? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna try going live on Instagram. I'm just curious to see how it works. Like, so just so you know, I'm going to be live on Instagram. Okay. So. All right. That's Maybe. cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I was just saying, but. Well, you were saying uh, people that you thought had gotten used to being like, um, oh, okay. Just kind of not really expressing yourself because because other because you learned from other people that uh, oh it's not okay to to be heard so it's like it's yeah i just um i put uh, i humbled myself that's what i was going to say i've humbled myself over the years to just listen to people when um when they speak 
And then I ask advice. I say, do you do you want for advice? Do you want, what do you think of this situation? Like, what do you, what can I do to be more helpful or supportive in this? Like, those are the questions that are meant to be asked rather than like trying to figure it out for the person. Yeah. Because- like, even if you think you know what it is, like, they have to come to that conclusion themselves. But also, but also, yeah, it, it's also like the perception um, is different based on your experience. And it's like, is, is this person trying to hurt me right now or not? Um, slash like, oh, what are, what are they doing that is like triggering me? And why? So, like for me, it's like um, like forgetfulness about what is important to me. Like, oh, you forgot that this is an important anniversary for me, personally. You know. Um, I forgot what. But have you have you ever forgotten something like that for about somebody? I have. And then I get very upset with myself. Like the things that um by the way, it did not work. <laughs> um the things okay. that that uh upset me the most when I do them is like if I forgot something for somebody else. Like, oh my gosh, I told him that I was going to do this. I feel terrible. Like, I mean, I don't know if everyone's like this, you know, where it's like, oops, oops, sorry, you know. Um, yeah, I feel like there are people out there that are like, oh, sorry. And you're like, okay. Yeah, I never really thought about that. Like, okay, so what are things that if you... If you, okay, here's another thing. Okay. I try not to lie as much as possible. I hate lying. Same. It Me too. Sucks. Like, just tell me the truth. Because when you don't tell someone the truth, then you're deciding for somebody else what they think they're capable of handling. And that is fucking disrespectful as fuck. Like, don't do that. Gaslighting. Or just like, no, I'm trying to protect myself or I'm trying to protect them. Like, are you, are you trying to protect them or can they know that something's wrong and you're making them feel crazy? Um, right. Have you ever seen the movie Midsommar? No. You like horror movies. I do. Whoa. This movie is so good. And I do not like horror movies. Like when I see things that are gory and like things like that, I get so like, ah, like it physically hurts me to see somebody in pain or acting in pain or that it looks painful. Um, This movie deals with trauma so well. And there's there's a couple scenes in that movie that I'm like, oh yeah, that's exactly what it feels like to be gaslighted and that's exactly what it feels like to be cheated on or that's exactly what it feels like to have have like what you care about like disregarded and I highly recommend that to you for so many reasons like as a horror movie as like cinematic they they do like uh, mushroom trips and so they have, oh yeah i like that yeah the way that they portray oh, fascinating and there's mythology and symbolism and oh yeah i would like it you would really like it it's a long movie what's it's it called midsummer so like midsummer but s-o-m-m-e-r um, okay it's and like i feel like probably people either love it or really hate it. I 
looked away like perfectly for the times where it's like I know that I can't look at the screen right now because I will freak out and you know what you know what's coming they tell you what's going to happen they like the first thing that you see on the screen is like a tapestry and it's like all that is going to happen so don't forget because when it happens you're going to be like ah it's still going to be it's still shocking um I like when I watch it with you. Like it's all right. We could have a movie night. We could do. Can we do it outside while it's like cool, crisp air on the thing? Yes, but that not, would be fun. Not in the front. We could Why? do it at your apartment or at the back of my apartment. Can we do it in the back of your apartment? Because my apartment doesn't have a wall, really. Yeah, yeah. We can. Well, I mean, like, yeah. Okay. Uh, like out the outside thing would be cool. No. Vector. So um. So like, so it's like, oh, that's so important to me that when somebody does it to me, somebody lies to me, such feelings of betrayal. Yeah, I don't like to be lied to. I'm like, I, I, they, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like lying to myself. I don't like lying to other uh-huh. people. Um, cause you know, I think maybe at one point my, I'd lied, I'd lie to myself about things to make myself feel better about it. You know, yeah. I'd be like, human defense mechanism. right. It'd be like, no, it's not as bad as it seems like, uh, like, you know, that's where moments of lying to ourselves, like saying, for instance, like you care, you have a friend, they're going through something. You told them they're going to be there. You forget. And you're going, well, I had this and the other thing going on and all of these other things happened and I forgot. And like, it doesn't negate the pain that the person felt. Yes. Yes. So, so to be like, and I don't want to take away from that either for myself of like, well, okay, I guess I'm not allowed to feel like shit because it's your fault. Right. Right. Like you had a crazy day and it's like, like, the person can then say like, I had a really wild day and this, that, and the other thing happened. And I know I was supposed to be there for you. And I'm really sorry that I wasn't like, I knew that meant a lot to you and I feel really bad about it. Please forgive me because someone did that. People don't. It meant, it meant they did. Yeah. Cause apologies are something that like not everybody's capable of doing sometimes like, and, and they're so, yeah, not, not even capable or, or of attempting. And then t- there's so many people who are, they give such shit apologies. And it's like, oh, you, do you care? Or are you there? I mean, like, people don't, people don't learn how to apologize correctly. People don't know how to grieve correctly. And people know how to, people don't know how to like express well, that are uncomfortable. Well, we are human, and luckily, you and I are two people that are in a process that we practice, and we we, pra- we practice what we learn, and we started this podcast, and we talk about these things so that if even one person walks away from something that we said, that's one more person in the world that might apply what we just did into their life. And so it's just that, like, I'm like, oh yeah, and then, and it it affects me so. Even if no one's watching, I I want you to know that like, like you mean very much to me. And oh, you mean the world to me. Like you, you I really, love you. I love you so much, and I'm so yeah. grateful that we're friends, and like that we've gotten through a lot of shit. We have gotten through a lot of shit, and you know what? It's like <laughs> there's no there's no. There's no pressure on our relationship either. It's like there's this mutual understanding of like, okay, like I talk to you and we could talk three days in a row or like I cannot talk to you. Like we see, we talk each every week, but like some days we talk more than others. And then if we don't like, you could call me at any time of the day and we would like still talk. Yes. So we talk to each other. Oh, that was the phone telling us that. Um, oh, it's over. Why are you well, we had a good. Why are you interrupting us? <laughs> why are you interrupting us? Um, but either way, we're 
we're gonna we're gonna be doing our comedy show and we love you we love me you should you should come and see it the love that katrina and i have for each other um it, it might get weird it might get weird let's hope it gets weird <laughs> because that makes that means there's a good story when it's yeah weird. people leave going what happened what did, did that's you? interesting did you see that Okay. No. Yeah. That. Okay. I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm excited too. Even though I'm like, yeah. Uh, oh, I wonder what jokes I'm gonna do. Because <laughs> I don't have. Uh, I'm pretty weird with my comedy. You're gonna bring your guitar though, right? And do your song. I will bring the guitar. Um, I don't have any new songs, I guess. Um, but I, I do have new jokes and Saturday it's going to be me just, I'm going to be like, all right, Doing them. let me focus and hammer it out. I have the time. I know I have the time. It's just, how do I make it so that this is going to work in that kind of environment? And, um, 20 minutes, it's a, it's a good chunk of time. Yeah. But, I mean, every week I do 10 minutes. All right. I got, I got jokes. And you got them. So amazing because you know how to just, you can talk to whoever. You can talk to, what? Oh, the, and that's what I was going to talk about with a cheerleading thing. And I, like, fuck you. Oh, me. yes. Good job. Good job coming back to cheerleader thing. What was it? I'm sorry. I was say, I remember seeing you perform at the open mic, uh, what was that, a couple months ago, like uh, in the little room. And oh, yeah. You were going back on stage in like a long time and you were like kind of nervous about it and you like joked about it and like when you settled into just being like I'm just no I'm like good at this it, it was like so clear you like relaxed and you just got like like as like just don't forget like just be like I'm Nicole and fuck all these people <laughs> And you'll be fine. Okay, okay, I can do it. I can do it. Do if 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 nobody else like just do the jokes. Just tell them right to me, and it's totally. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk straight to you. Just That's talk, it. You told me you told me to do that at the at the laugh off. Yeah, I was like, just I'll be in the back of the room. Just look at me. I'll be laughing. So it it worked. And normally I get so it nervous. It did. In the room, but I'm like, no, it's Nicole. I'm like Nicole's gonna. I did. Oh, you did great that night. I, I did. We great. had fun though. You, you did. You did great. I got complimented by the person that I wanted to. I wanted him to see me perform again after years, and I got a compliment. So all I wanted, all I needed. And you were happy. I was happy. That was all you needed. I did jokes that I'd never done, and they got big laughs. And I said some really tough shit uh, up there, and it's it's got laughs. And oh, so when you were on on stage, and you first time the open mic, and you relaxed into it, and at the end end of the set, it's like you know you come off the stage, but you weren't done. Do you remember that? What do you mean? Oh, with the guy who went up? You were like, it was, it was interesting. You were like, you were like back into like, yeah, I'm in the room. Like there was a, there was a guy who was on stage and he was like, he remember he was like staring and like. Being oh yeah, yeah, the heckling guy. He started singing. Uh, you, tr you, d you handled that situation perfectly. Okay. The guy, he, he ended up doing a very specific performance at the end and you were like the cheerleader for this guy that was like being weird towards you and heckling like the whole time and it was just like i remember and i don't i guess i never got to like tell you this too like um but i remember being like the fool knows how to be around literally anyone and <laughs> thank you and like like 
the ultimate host. Like that's what it means to be a host is like, I'm going to make you comfortable. This is going to be fun. I'm like whatever. Like I'm me. Fuck you. Love you. Fuck you. <laughs> right. Thank you for seeing you that. Thank you. And then we're going to be friends. <laughs> Thank you. That's like the best compliment I've ever had. So oh. thank you. I <laughs> love that. I, thank you so much because I feel that way about myself sometimes. And I'm like, it's nice when somebody, I thought this thought earlier today and it's like, I love when someone gives you a compliment that reassures something that you feel about yourself. Yes. You know, like when somebody reassures you of something and they compliment that aspect of yourself that you're like, I think I'm like pretty okay at this, you know, like I, okay. 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 Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Like I did good. Like I think I, I think I handled that well, but like nobody ever tells me I do. I'm just like, I think I did. Are also terrible at compliments. And I feel like that could be a whole another podcast. I think people are terrible at compliments um, because I think also though, it's connected to people having difficulty being sincere. Right. Because it's- Oh, I'm excited. You got me pumped for this now. Now, see, you are a great cheerleader. I'm like, I'm gonna do great. <laughs> You're gonna be great. You're gonna be great. Literally, it, literally the building could be on fire you understand and you'll be and it'll be the most there will be the most hilarious fire that ever was <laughs> <laughs> i love you thank you <laughs> love them um well that's definitely our time and i think yes you know what we're running the light because we're we're talking nice things we're talking nice things we're talking nice things and we're unstructured it's unstructured. This is a not live one. We could. Yeah, we could do whatever we want. We could. We could cut it. We could. Yeah, we could cut some parts of it if we need be. We won't cut it because. Yeah, we could cut the part where I'm going on about the headphones, trying to figure out if it works or not. That doesn't need to be in there, right? Anyway, I have to go pee desperately. Are we on still? Uh, we will go, we will end the recording. Um, and thank you again for watching. Unstructured. Thank you. Bye. Awesome.